Hi there, um, my name is Hannah Cochran and I am an educational psychologist working in the west of Birmingham. Hi, my name is Melinda Sanger, I'm an educational psychologist and I work in the east of Birmingham. In this video, we are going to talk a little bit about what educational psychologists do and um, how you can become an educational psychologist. Then we'll go on to talk about our journeys um, to becoming qualified and we will share a little bit about the skills that you need and some top tips to take away um, about the journey to becoming an educational psychologist. What is an educational psychologist? Well, an educational psychologist is someone who has kind of a, a training and background in psychology, um, who has experience in education and working with children and young people. Um, we work to support children and their families and their schools um, in a range of different situations. So sometimes the young people that we work with might be having some um, difficulties around their learning or their social skills or uh, something to do with their emotions or their behaviour um, or it could be something that's going on kind of wider for them or for their school. Um, so we work with the people kind of most concerned to find out what's going on and then try and put some things in place to um, help that situation. Sometimes we work directly with the young people themselves um, and so we might uh, meet them and have a chat with them or we might um, observe them in their classrooms but often we're working with the people around them so that might be their parents or their teachers um, sometimes we work more with groups um, or we might work more with kind of school staff to make sure that they're skilled and confident working with a range of young people um, educational psychologists also are involved with uh, research and other project work kind of outside of schools as well. So there's a lot of variety in what we do and, and what any one educational psychologist does. Uh, their colleagues might work in a slightly different way as well. So it's a really interesting career that you can kind of um, shape to your own interests. Here's what a week as an educational psychologist might look like. Um, what you'll notice is that we visit lots of different places. So schools, nurseries, colleges, homes, um, and we do lots of different things within that as well. So the work that we do in each setting will vary um, between kind of directly working with children and young people themselves, meeting um, with adults and staff that support them. Um, so a week as an EP is really varied um, and you know, there's always something different going on. Yeah, so how do you become an EP? So in order to work as a qualified educational psychologist, um, you would need to complete either an undergraduate degree in psychology or a master's conversion course in psychology if your first degree is in a different subject. Um, so it's important that your psychology degree or your master's conversion course is accredited by the BPS, which is the British Psychological Society. So it's not necessary that you do an A-level in psychology, um, but you may want to do that just to learn a bit more about what psychology is before you um, choose a degree in the subject. So following your degree, um, you will need to obtain at least one year's experience of working with children and young people. And that can be made up of a mixture of paid and voluntary experiences. Um, and that can be in a range of sectors like education, social care, health, or even within the community. So once you've got your degree, um, you've got a year's experience, at least a year's experience, then you can apply for a three year professional doctorate in applied educational psychology. Um, so there are 13 universities in England that offer this course. Um, and this year there were about 203 places that were offered. Um, in terms of the local universities, um, University of Birmingham offered 18 places and, and the University of Nottingham offered 16. Um, 
In terms of this doctorate, it is a three year course. Um, it is funded by the government and trainees on the course do receive a bursary while they're completing the course. Um, so that's important to, to think about as well. Um, the course kind of involves a mixture of taught elements and research and you would also be working on placement within local authority so educational psychology services as a trainee EP. Um, so once you've done completed the three year doctorate and um, then you can apply to the Health and Care Professions Council to be to be registered as a qualified educational psychologist. So my career journey, um, I decided that I wanted to um, study psychology back in year nine when I was in school because I thought it sounded kind of really interesting um, and I've always been interested in, in people so that kind of fits me. Um, so when I did my A-levels I chose psychology as one of those um, and then when I was looking at universities I was looking at psychology degrees there. So I came um, to Birmingham to do my psychology degree um, and so that at the time was kind of a three-year undergraduate um, that covers lots of different things within psychology so it's not just specialising in educational it's quite broad um, and then whilst I was there they introduced a, a master's year that I then um, joined into so I then spent a year uh, in an educational psychology service actually in Birmingham educational psychology service um, learning a little bit more about what educational psychologists do. Um, whilst I was at uni I also did quite a lot of volunteering so um, I volunteered for a, a charity kind of helping them with um, like conferences and sending out leaflets and things like that so it's quite a good kind of organisational experience um, but I also worked on a Saturday morning with a kids club for children with autism and I also did um, a day a week in a special school as well so I volunteered there um, and those were really I think helpful for me in terms of um, experience because I got to actually work with some of these kids and um, find out a little bit more what it's like kind of day to day to support them and to support their families as well um, and then when I finished my degree I actually went and worked at the special school that I'd volunteered at so again that was like a really good link um, and I could become a, a TA there um, and then I applied for the doctorate at Birmingham University um, whilst I was working in that school as well so I could use all of my experience from working with those kids and from my volunteering um, and, and then I got onto the course and I did the three-year doctorate so that's my career journey. So my career journey um, and when I decided to do psychology or study psychology was um, at secondary school so um, I remember thinking about what kind of career I wanted and for me it was really important that um, I was in a, in a career where I was helping others and um, being of service to others so um, initially I thought either become a lawyer of some sort or, um, or, psychology, or be a psychologist but I wasn't really sure about what that meant in terms of what psychology was um, so I did um, some work experience in year 10 um, at a solicitor's office um, and I think that experience um, really helped to make the decision about whether I wanted to pursue psychology or not and um, because I didn't really enjoy the experience at all and um, so I then decided to do choose psychology as an A-level um, I also chose law as well just because I was still interested but um, I thought I need to learn a bit more about psychology so I chose um, psychology as an A-level um, and then I went on to do my initial undergraduate degree in psychology. Um, for me, it was important to choose a local university and um, I didn't actually um, get my first choice in terms of my grades, but through the clearing process, I obtained a place at Aston University um, on the human psychology course and similar to Hannah's um, degree um, it was quite broad in terms of the topics that were or the modules that were taught um, and this course just happened to be a sandwich course so it had an integrated placement year 
So you'd do your first and second year and then this third year would be a placement year out on the field. And I think that was a turning point for me because um, that's when I first encountered educational psychology. I hadn't heard of it before then. Um, so I did a placement within Wolverhampton's educational psychology service where I had the opportunity to learn a bit more about what the job um, was and to, to learn more about how psychology is applied in the real world um, to support children and young people. And there I also kind of made different links with educational psychologists or trainee educational psychologists, which was really important for me because I hadn't um, I didn't have any sort of family members or friends that were within that field. So I did that placement and I also volunteered in a alternative provision for children um, as a teaching assistant. So I had some experience of working directly with children in that way as well. Um, and then I completed my degree, so I went back and did my final year. Um, I made sure that I chose modules that were aligned with educational psychology and were linked with that so that I could learn a little bit more. Um, and I think during my university time, I also that was when I started to um, volunteer um, with Childline as a counsellor. So I can, um, worked as a counsellor on the telephone um, to give me more experience of supporting with emotional needs as well. Um, so following my degree, my first job was um, as, an, as a pastoral assistant um, in a primary school. Um, so there I had experience of using some of the psychology that I'd learned to support children with their social and emotional development and also just to learn a bit more about the school system and the culture of the school um, and then I went on to work as a psychology intern within Birmingham Educational Psychology Service and that opportunity arose through the links that I'd made and um, whilst I was in Wolverhampton as a placement student um, so then again I was working within a psychology service and um, supporting psychologists with different um, pieces of work um, at that point, I then I applied to do the doctorate, the three year doctorate at the University of Birmingham. Um, and I also applied to work at, as an assistant psychologist in Wolverhampton again. So I went back to Wolverhampton as an assistant psychologist working within their educational psychology service um, for about nine months and then um, applied for the doctorate and secured a place um, for the three year qualification. So that's um, my journey, my career journey. On top of the qualifications and experience that Menindra and I have talked about, there are also some key qualities that really help if you want to become an educational psychologist. Being a good listener, being interested and curious about people, building relationships, problem solving, critical thinking and having good written skills. Some top tips would be to use your free time um, to gain experience and build on your skills and that can be through your part time jobs. Um, so I worked in a pharmacy and I found that gave me the opportunity to build some some of my skills of working with people, but also having um, looking out for summer internships which are paid. So they could be through universities where you support research projects. Um, and give you gives you kind of research experience as well, which is really important. Um, or you could volunteer um, for different charities like Hannah and I have done, um, which gives you um, sort of added experience of working with a range of people in a range of different settings and providing different type of different types of support. Um, and also, I would say. Um, network and communicate with different people within the field that you want to get into. So I know that um, there's a large Twitter community of EPs and um, you know they're very supportive and generous with their time and um, if you reached out to them they'd be more than happy to talk to you about the role. Um, and also a few people have messaged me via different other social media channels and I'm, I'm more than happy to um, talk about the role um, as well. Um, and then the final thing is about the degree that you do. So make sure that your degree is accredited by the British Psychological Society um, and you can find that out via the um, course page and it usually tells you whether it is or not when you're applying for university. And not not to worry as well if you decide that you don't want to pursue a career in educational psychology or 
um, if you decide later on that you want to do that and actually your degree is in a different course, there is the option of doing a conversion um, course into psychology as well. So don't worry if you change your mind. Hopefully that's given you a bit of a taste of uh, our work and how you might become an educational psychologist. If you wanted any more information, um, here are a couple of websites that could be really useful for you. Um, so these are professional organisations that support educational psychologists. So they've got lots of information on them. Also, you might want to read a little bit more about other people's experiences of educational psychology. So here are a couple of articles and blogs written by educational psychologists or a trainee educational psychologist who's currently studying at the University of Birmingham. And we hope this presentation has been interesting and useful for you um, and that it's maybe given you a bit more of an insight into what educational psychologists do.